Chapter 3, NoFap. Subtopics that I will cover in this chapter include dopamine, dopamine receptors, pornography addiction, sexual dysfunction, including erectile dysfunction, and relationship dysfunction. When it comes to masculinity, when you think of every topic which our masculinity is associated with, what comes to mind first? Is it diet? Is it gains? Is it sex? Is it hot girls? Is it vulnerability or protection of one's family or making money? Or giving to charity and doing community service? Or fighting a war for your country? What exactly comes to mind? No matter what it is, the most. Let me highlight. The most confusion-provoking and misunderstood subject is... Pornography. I have worked directly, one-on-one, -on -one, with at least a hundred clients who were heavily addicted to porn. It's ubiquitous in our society, in our generation, in the modern world. First, let's look at A. What's exactly happening? B. Who's involved? And C. What's at stake? Then I'll give you some real-world examples before we discuss the hardcore science behind this very fascinating subject. A. What's exactly happening? As a child, let's say you are 12 years old. You have sexual feelings and you see sexual images in society, be it on TV or from your friends at school or on social media. It's everywhere. Why? Because as marketers have known forever, Sex sells, and therefore, everyone uses sex, directly or indirectly, to sell their shit. I am no exception. You may remember me making videos with Mia Khalifa in the title. I'm just like them. Not gonna lie. The only difference is that my intention is to make you aware of the facts, whereas the others either ignore the realities, or they intentionally hide it from children. Look, when I was a kid, Neither of my parents knew what to say to me when it came to sex education. I had zero knowledge of how to have sex with a girl. What a clit was, or which hole to put it in. I had zero clue about orgasms, masturbation, lovemaking, kissing, stimulating a girl in various parts of her body. I knew nothing. But when I was a teenager, I had access to magazines, pay-per-view channels, which showed scrambled porn. It was scrambled because the movie was not purchased and the channel was scrambled in this case. I understand that this chapter is not about me. It's about you. But I just want to make it ultimately clear that I have experienced and felt every single pain when it comes to being addicted. I was masturbating to porn as a child and was addicted to, for more than 20 years of my life. I would ejaculate within seconds because I was scared of my parents. There were millions of cues which triggered my bad habit. These included my parents leaving the house, my family going to sleep, me being home alone, me having the room to myself when my brother was not there. The reward was always the same. That feeling of orgasm. That satisfaction of a load and stress moving away from your body. It felt good. I was a child then, but I knew the feeling. I even masturbated to my aunt as she would undress. I was not allowed to have a girlfriend. I knew nothing about why and what I was feeling. These were confusing times, which remained confusing until my 30s, when I finally began to explore sex and relationships. In future chapters, I will teach you exactly how to rid yourself of bad habits and addictions and replace them with new ones. But for now, let's dig deeper into the subject of nofap and porn addiction. The definition I use for addiction is a simple one. I learned it from this guy called Tristan Harris, a former design ethicist at Google who is currently fighting the fight and creating a movement to warn people against the dangers of smartphones. Both him and I are on the same team it's actually a big team of people trying to raise awareness about how 
Silicon Valley tech entrepreneurs are controlling the brains of more than 2 billion people in the world. So, according to Tristan, addiction is something which gives you short-term gain, you feel good and get some immediate gratification, but long-term loss. You regret engaging in the activity after it's over. And there any social media platforms or video games or Netflix shows or YouTube channels or porn sites which you're addicted to, are there, according to this definition? See, addictions of this type are known as behavioral addictions. And although they are just recently coming into the consciousness of the mainstream, they are no different than substance addictions, such as heroin addiction or meth addiction. The basic pathways involved, including transmission of neurotransmitters such as dopamine, as well as the mechanisms of neural circuitry and processing are similar between behavioral and substance addictions. No one believed this fact for so long, but now the science-based proof, with science-based proof, no one can argue. It's now recognized as a serious issue, partly because it's so easy to access porn. You visit one link, click on one video, and off you go. This relies on the choice architecture you have laid out for yourself. Let's discuss the science next and later come back to the real world examples. Mm. You may be surprised or not to find out that 70% of males and 20% of females between 18 to 30 years old use pornography weekly. These numbers along with the fact that for those who are less than 18 years old, 90% of boys and 60% of girls have used porn at some point in their life. What's even crazier is that 12% of children watch porn regularly before the age of 12. Now don't get me wrong. Many men and women watch porn as a form of entertainment and nothing more. But there are also tons of men who have PPU, problematic pornography use. Yes, there's a fucking academic acronym for porn addicts. PPU. These men are those who are actively seeking treatment for their porn usage, are severely addicted, and have a hard time focusing on real life. Many who are married in their relationships. We get into marriage and porn later on in this chapter. The most recent fMRI study on porn concluded a few things, and I want to discuss each here. One, Problematic, and I quote, problematic porn use subjects showed increased activation of the ventral striatum specifically for cues predicting erotic pictures, but not for cues predicting monetary gains. Reference seven. Here we see that the ventral striatum, a part of the brain, is implicated strongly in porn addiction. This is the same area which is associated with other types of addictions, which are non-behavioral. This is also the area in which dopamine is highly present. In fact, most addiction experiments study dopamine and its receptors in the ventral striatum. You also notice that ventral striatum activation was related to triggers for erotic pictures, but not for cues predicting making more money. It's not just a matter of gaining value in general. It seems to be very specific mechanistically. Two, in, and I quote, in PPU subjects, the, this brain activation was accompanied by measures suggesting increased behavioral motivation to view erotic images and higher wanting. The way I interpret this is the following. If porn induces behavioral motivation to view more porn, this indicates that the connections in the porn circuitry are getting stronger and stronger. This is why it is so hard to stop, man. You watch once, you want to watch again, and again, and again. Before you know it, you cannot stop. It becomes impossible. No amount of willpower can help you. Three. The findings suggest similarities between PPU and addictions and an important role for learned cues in PPU. Again, PPU is problematic pornography use. 
identifying PPU-related triggers and targeting the dissociation of learned cues from problematic behaviors may be useful in the treatment of PPU. You see, it is almost impossible to treat PPU because there are thousands of triggers. You would literally have to move away from your house and go live with your aunt in some village in the Arctic. But then again, if such an aunt exists, you might want to go, depending on the severity of your addiction. Now we go on to B. Who is involved? I'll try to keep this brief since it doesn't really matter to solve our issues. In a nutshell, porn companies have billions of dollars to invest in virtual reality and other technology to make them look more real. They have always been ahead of the game. In fact, when I was living in Vegas, I always attended the adult film festivals, which always demonstrated the newest VR gadgets. It was real as fuck. Stay tuned for the future. Shit's about to hit the fan. I apologize in advance if you're a coprophiliac and this sentence triggered you. <laughs> you see, these internet companies are very different from Penthouse or Hustlers Magazine or Playboy of the past. The magazines, or Instagram pictures of today, serve the same purpose at times, contain erotic images which, were mas which we masturbated to and orgasm to. But there was not really any porn-induced erectile dysfunction then, as there is now. Why? You see, video has a frame rate which is much faster than anything our brain has ever seen. Thus, it becomes more real. The dopamine release is at a much greater capacity with today's pornography use than any magazine of the past. Let's discuss dopamine and dopamine receptors soon as well. Porn use not only facilitates the release of accessing amounts of dopamine into the synapse, which is the connection between two brain cells, it depletes the receptors which allow dopamine to function properly. If there are no receptors, dopamine is just hanging out in the space between the two cells, and there's nothing to bind to. There is one reason why libido may be depleted in men who watch porn for many years. No, this is one reason why libido may be depleted in men who watch porn for many years. In other words, in order to get off, the brain requires a certain amount of dopamine release triggered by anticipation of reward and some kinky stuff you've been watching. But since a real world partner may not be as stimulating as a porn star doing unreal scenes and a lot of naughty shit, enough dopamine may not be secreted. And thus the stimulation received is never enough. The, sh the threshold is never surpassed. This may be one reason why marriages or other loving relationships break apart. What a sad world we live in. C. What's at stake? First and foremost, the philosophical discussion behind this topic can get deep. Let's go into it briefly here. For me, it's the ultimate contrast between real and fake. But unfortunately, the human brain has not evolved to tell the difference. We know from evolutionary psychology, somewhat of a pseudoscience, but we are gaining more evidence of its thought-provoking hypotheses, that when we watch porn, the brain thinks that we are having sex with the girl in the scene. Thus, if you have watched hundreds of porn stars doing thousands of scenes involve, involving different fetishes and imaginations, your brain thinks it's all real. But it's also confused because you are not getting the touch receptors activated as you would in real life. There is, no oxytocin, there is no oxytocin release, or very little. Since there is no emotional attachment, there is no love for the girl. There is no physical contact caressing you, physically expressing love. So, the brain cells get confused. Your endocrine system, which controls your hormones, gets confused. Your entire body goes into haywire, and you know what? In the moment, you will never realize it. You'll learn it when your relationships break apart and when you have porn-induced sexual dysfunction, which we discuss next. Last year in 2016, luckily a review of the clinical literature was published, reference 8, discussing everything we have learned about porn-induced erectile dysfunction. Here we go. I'll begin with the study's conclusion. 
there's a sharp increase in sexual dysfunction, including erectile dysfunction, delayed ejaculation, and sexual dissatisfaction, which cannot be explained by natural factors, and thus are attributed to pornography. There seems to be an indication based on our scientific understanding that sexual dysfunction may be reversed only after completely stopping the viewing of pornography, and NoFap is one of the protocols which have been used. Before I discuss my personal NoFap protocol and how I gradually overcame my own porn addiction, let's discuss some more clinical studies. First thing I'm asked is, Doc, how long will you how long will it take me to recover? To answer I, this question, I answered this question using a scientific study which explored this topic. They showed, and I quote, that Eight months after stopping all exposure to pornography, the patient reported experiencing successful orgasm and ejaculation and succeeded in enjoying good sexual relations, end quote, reference nine. So it seems that there is evidence for eight months being a reasonable amount of time. Now, although the authors don't mention the word nofap, it is clear that this was the protocol the patient followed. In a nutshell, nofap is the practice in which you are not allowed to fap or masturbate to porn. And in most cases, you are not allowed to masturbate, period. Nor are you allowed to have orgasms. PMO, it is known as for P is porn, M is masturbation, O is orgasm. This information is rampant on the internet. But I would suggest that you don't just follow what you read. A lot of crap out there. Be smart. I would recommend yourbrainonporn.com for more info. I trust them. We also know that, and I quote from a paper, quote, assessing multiple variables, the frequency of pornography use in 2006 was the second strongest predictor of poor mar uh, marital quality in 2012, which is six years later. Now, let me ask you something. Is this something to be proud of? Is this masculine? Are sexual dysfunctions and addictions masculine? Is porn addiction a sign of masculine energy and potency and virility? Answer me. Fucking answer me, damn it. A man who needs a machine to satisfy him, his manhood? Is this person a real man? I'm not implying shit. I'm merely asking you. I want to ask you one additional thing. Do you experiment on yourself? You see, the medical literature only has a few case studies which have carefully isolated pornography use in relation to erectile dysfunction, delayed orgasm, and other ejaculation issues and low sexual desire. So I want you to conduct a case study on yourself. This is a challenge. Do this. Keep everything else the same in your life if possible and to just stop watching porn for a few months. See what happens in your life. Are you finding girls hotter? Are you approaching them more? Is your anxiety and fear much less than it used to be? Are you feeling better? Do you have any more gains at the gym? My hypothesis is that your life will improve dramatically. I want you to measure this as much as you can and report it to me when you have the results. Let's gather data and then perhaps our tribe can provide insights to the rest of the world. Why the fuck not? Dopamine. Before we discuss dopamine and dopamine receptors, let's cover some basics of neurophysiology of reward and sexual stimulation. So, how do you achieve sex erections and nighttime erections? Ever thought about this? You get a boner, okay. But how does it actually happen? Is it testosterone dependent? Does boner strength, penis size, how long you can go for, and thus actually maintain your erection? Do these feature into anything that's masculine? Mate, I cannot answer these questions for you. No one can. All I can do is tell you scientific facts and share my personal experience. If you remember, we spoke about the, hypothalam the hypothalamus before when we discussed the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Well, it turns out, hypothalamic nuclei, the hypothalamus and surrounded areas associated with the hypothalamus, play a key and central integrative role in promoting, in producing, sorry, in producing and creating erections. In fact, the hypothalamus is also the starting point for the production of testosterone. But how does the hypothalamus know to create an erection in you? Well, that's when we get 
into the dopamine pathway. It turns out that the dopamine pathway signals the hypothalamus to start the process of erection. This pathway is the one which actually detects reward, including a hot girl, delicious food, heroin, cold hard cash, etc. This is what we refer to as the reward system. It is very it is the it is this very dopamine pathway that feeds pro-erection input into the hypothalamic nuclei. But erections aren't just dependent upon the neurotransmitter dopamine, eh? Dopamine also needs to bind to something known as dopamine receptors. Thus, there must be both enough dopamine and receptors in the appropriate regions of the brain involved. Porn overuse and abuse fuck up this circuit we are talking about, causing havoc in your reward circuitry, causing dysfunction, addictions, and questionable masculinity. If you want, ever want proof of what we're talking about here, consider the fact that porn addiction circuitry is similar to that of drug abuse. You being addicted to cocaine, heroin, or meth triggers similar responses and processes that you are watching in a porn scene. The synaptic plasticity, which is the ability of your brain to make synapses or brain connections stronger and more efficient, is increased in these circuits. And therefore, porn addiction leads to more addictions, which leads to more addiction. You get the picture. That's it for chapter 3, mate. On to chapter 4. Enjoy it. We will finally speak of some solutions and address how interesting and out-of-the-ordinary protocols can help people. I can also talk about my personal experience.